Hello and welcome to another tutorial from OICT. In this tutorial, we're going to explore how to drag and drop ob game objects inside of Unity using the touch control. So uh, let's just take a look at what this um, project does. So I have got four cubes in this scene and I've got my Android phone connected here and it should load up. So when it loads up, it changes the colors um, of the cube so we can actually see which cube we are moving. So if I just touch and drag, let's say for example, the blue one, Okay, down here, and then put the other one up there, pink one over here, and then the green one over there. So what this is doing is that it's checking which object that we're tapping on, and then it's activating the object, and then we're able to sort of move it relative to the camera and relative to the world view. Okay, so this will be a, another addition to the mobile development tutorial that we're doing for uh, Unity games development. So hopefully you find this one useful and let's get started on it by making a new project. Okay, so in this window I'm going to click on new. This is going to be a 3D project. So let's call this one Unity Touch and Drag Tutorial More ICT. Click Create. Okay, the project is now loaded. So what we can do here is we can go to the build settings and then change it to Android platform. Uh, because we're using the touch controls, it's a lot easier to test it out on an actual mobile device rather than clicking on the screen. Okay, so now the platform has been switched. Uh, we need to do one more thing to basically allow the editor to run the app on the phone. So if I go to edit project settings editor choose any Android device from the list here as long as the Android device is connected and you have the unity remote 5 running it should be fine so I'm just going to run this one just to check if it's connected properly okay yep that's showing up that's fine All right so we need to do a couple of things we need to first of all we need to make two scripts here so one script is going to be called dragging right so this is going to be in charge of dragging the objects and another one is going to be for changing color. So instead of so call this one changing color, uh, we have got two scripts. So one is called dragging and one is called changing color. So okay, so the dragging script is going to be attached to the camera, and then the change color one is going to be attached to the cubes. Okay, so let's go and make a cube first. So right now one cube is added here. I'm just going to duplicate that. Control D, and then move that up slightly. I'm going to select both of them by holding Shift and clicking on them. I can select both and make two duplicates of this, and then I can move it. I'm moving in the wrong direction. Okay, so I'll readjust this so I can see what I'm doing with this one. So if I select the two there, okay. Select all of them, move them in the middle. Okay, let's move up the main camera and switch off the sky box to a solid color. And we'll just choose a darker gold color here, so it looks a bit distinct. Okay, so with that done, we got our four uh, cubes. So I'm just going to highlight all four cubes here and I'm going to drag the changing color script to it. We haven't put anything into those scripts yet, but I'm just going to connect these scripts to the object. So I'm going to click on the main camera, drag the dragging script on there as well. Okay, so now let's start with the changing script first. So I'm just going to double click on this one. Uh, we're not going to need the update function in the changing script, so we can just delete that one from there so it doesn't need to run. Okay, so first thing we're going to do here is what we want to do is just to make them look a bit more distinct, we're just going to change the color of the uh, material and we can do that through the script quite easily. So let me just show you how this is done. So I'm just going to create a public color, call this one say active color, and then inside the start, we're going to say get component mesh renderer, like so get the material, get the color of the material, and then change that to the active color. That's it. So we are able to pick a color. We don't have to define the color here. We're able to pick a color 
from the inspector and then we can it will just automatically add it to that bit here so let's just take a look how it works so now that we're back in unity if you click on one of the cubes you can see that there's an active color bar here on the bottom and then if you click on that it should open up the color picker so i can just pick a color say i just pick something bright but it's not going to change it in the inspector it will change it when the game runs so i'm just going to click on green here for this one you can make the bright red or something for the second one the purple color for the other one pick okay the yellow the yellow is going to be too similar to the background okay so i just picked four colors for these so i pick like a green bright green bright red purple and a light blue color there so i think that's a turquoise i believe okay i'm just going to run this one to see what they look like when the game runs <coughs> okay so as you can see now the boxes are applying the colors to them okay all right well, let's go ahead and now let's open the dragging script and we're going to get started on writing the coding for this one okay so if you start on the dragging script we're not going to need the start function here so we can just delete that we need the update and we need a few variables okay so let's go ahead and make a private float list for distant let's make a private bool called dragging equals to false so which means that by default we are not dragging any object we can make it private vector 3 called offset and then we also need a private transform called to drag so this is going to be the object to drag um, when we hit a object when it returns a value to us we need to drag the object okay so one other thing that I'm, I think I'm forgetting to do is that tags so let's just go and add a tag here called cube okay so there's the cube tag here and then if I select all four of these and then add a tag cube to them so that will help us identify them when we are in the code and then we can start writing it up from there okay so these are the variables that we need so when you've got a distance float we get dragging boolean and offset vector 3 and a to drag transform okay so inside the update function we need to make a local variable vector 3 let's call this one b3 and then we're going to say so first of all we say if input oh, come to i input dot touch count is no equals to one right in that case we're just going to say dragging is equals to false and we'll just return so that way the this rest of the event will not run if there's no touch registered on the screen okay uh, next thing we need to do is touch and do a lowercase touch for example and say equals to input dot touches then we're dealing with the first one here then we need to make a vector 3 all pause so that's the position of the touch so you can say touch dot position okay so we register the position into a vector 3 variable there okay and now we can say if touch dot phase right so we need to figure out if the touch phase has begun so touch phase okay. don't begin so if the event has been so if the touch has begun on the screen the event's been triggered so let's make it ray first ray equals to camera dot main dot screen to ray and then we will in the position that we have saved from that one there then we need a ray cast hit okay, let's call a hit and I'm gonna say if if physics dot ray cast right and then we're sending in a ray and to return a hit from there if we get that then we can say if 
hit the collider dot tag is equals, equals cube so that's the cube tag that we're looking for from earlier then we can say to drag equals hit dot transform so whichever object that we tapped onto at that point that will be registered to the to drag private transform that we created over there and then we need to figure out the distance is going to be equals to hit dot transform dot position dot z right so it's a um, dealing because we're dealing with obviously 3d objects and we don't want to change the z um, position of the objects because they're going to be dealing with x and y more most of the time okay so then we can say camera dot main dot transform dot position dot z then obviously now we need to apply the v3 that we created earlier so v3 equals to new vector 3 now we're dealing with the position dot x position dot y and then we also have the distance of the okay and then we can say v3 is equals to camera dot main yes screen to world point okay so we can actually convert the units to pixels to view them in the scene okay and then of course we go with the offset is equals to two drag dot position minus v3 so we get the offset between the two values and lastly we check we can change dragging to true okay so all of this part is basically for if the touch phase has begun so at that point we are ready to sort of drag the object from where it is to where we need to go so now we need to do that part for if now if the touch phase moved from where it was so now we're going to check if dragging is equals equals true obviously so if dragging right and we need to say touch dot phase equals equals touch phase oh. The capital there moved right so because we're setting the dragging to true if we hit an object called cube so that means that we have got an object to move on the screen now we can actually move the object as the fingers move on the screen okay so we can say again v3 is equals to new vector 3 Okay, new vector 3 so inside of this one we're going to put in the input of the mass position x and input for the mass position y okay so let's try that for a second the mass position dot x dot y and then obviously we've got the distance that we calculated earlier okay we also do the v3 again equals to camera dot main dot to world point okay and then we'll see, passing the v3 value for that okay and then lastly say to drag dot position equals to v3 plus the offset from where it was before so now what we can do is we need to go in and say so if for some reason the uh, dragging was cancelled by the app or if we obviously you know, stopped touching on the screen then we need to cancel the dragging altogether so if say dragging so now we're checking if dragging is equals equals true first and then we need to do a bracket and say touch dot phase equals equals touch phase dot ended right or touch dot phase equals equals touch phase dot cancelled right so if for whatever reason if the app cancels that touch where it's supposed to register it or if we you know if the user ended the touch then we're just going to change dragging back to false so that way we don't necessarily just keep dragging a object the object doesn't keep moving up or down you know depending on whether what it was moved before okay so let's go back to unity let it compile the script Okay, so now if we press play on this one, so the, then let's take a look at how this one works. Okay, so the app has loaded on the phone. I'm just showing the screen here. So if I press on the blue one right now, deselect these. Okay, and press it down. So as you can see, it's following my finger across. 
right and then if I hold the red one I sit down and let go it stops then I press and hold the green one move it across move it down here let go and now the purple one move it over here and let go of that back to the blue so I can just stack them on top of one another I hope you enjoyed this one both of the scripts are available on the website links in the description and I will see you on the next one